Hi, in this recording I'll show you uh, some of the tricks in the Oracle 11G R2 installation on Fedora 20. So uh, there's another video where I show a little bit of a setup uh, of this installation and uh, here we see the installation is progressing fine until we're going to hit an error and uh, this error is coming up here momentarily all right, everything's working fine. There we go. So this error shows that the uh, compilation of the INSCTX make file is failing. So if you were to look up the log file, uh, it's going to give you uh, an error message, which points to uh, a very specific uh, fix, and it is uh, we need to find the uh, INSCTX make file and that it would be under your uh, home Oracle uh, product version and then uh, under the, the uh, sysman uh, directory uh, but before you can do that you have to install a couple of uh, glib uh, static packages and so that's what I am uh, showing you how to do right now we are going to log in as root and install the glib uh, C, both 64-bit and 32-bit versions. So I'm going to uh, forward through this. Uh, obviously, I uh, was recording as I was doing that. So now we'll go ahead and uh, edit the file, uh, which is causing uh, current error. And there are actually two files in this uh, code line that we'll have to edit. The first one, uh, the ins underscore ctx make file. And here you're going to add the keyword static uh, in front of uh, uh, linking of uh, the library. All right, so we'll search for ctx hx. There it is. And we're going to at the dash static in front of it. And so you'll find uh, you'll find some of uh, the syntax in the about to this video. Alright, and so after completing this line we're going to go ahead and save the file and then we'll continue to the next file which needs to be added. By the way, you might have to restart the installation after making these uh, changes. Uh, just pressing retry uh, will actually not uh, work. So make the changes, stop the install, and then restart it again. There are some other tricks uh, like the uh, TMP environment variable uh, needs to be pointing to an actual directory. Uh, in Fedora 20 instead of the slash TMP. Also pay attention to the kernel parameters which can be fixed right from the installer. Okay, so now we're going to look for the um, uh, make EM agent or enterprise manager agent entry the NMETG CTL and make sure to enter here LNNZL11 mistakenly here uh, I'm entering LNZL1 uh, in some of the instructions it actually looks like an L should be two ones at the end otherwise uh, you end up uh, with another error okay so with this in place this is the error that we are addressing and uh, now uh, we can uh, continue to video here of uh, the installation. Let's see, we have configuration pending. I'll forward through this. All right, and here is another error. This particular error is ca caused by uh, incorrect kernel configuration. Uh, and uh, I'll show you where this is uh, located. Okay, this particular kernel configuration will be under Etsy. Uh, 
CTL. And the key here is this last number, 256. Your default config might be 100, 128, 128, 128. And if you have the um, installer fix this for you, it'll set this to 250, 32, 128, 128. So make sure to reset it to 256. And so that's going to take care of this particular uh, error. Okay, so at this point, my installation is uh, progressing well, and I am now looking at execution of the root scripts. So we'll go ahead and do that. Uh, let's uh, go to Home Oracle, and this of course has to be done as the root user. And uh, we will execute our inventory for installation root. There we go. And then the next one would be Oracle product 11 db root. So uh, let's run that. Looks good to me. And this is completed. So we say OK in the installation. All right, so the installation was successful. I had the Enterprise Manager running, actually the, the DB Control version of it, ready to close, and uh, the database is installed. To make sure that's the case, I can run PS with uh, Aura, and so you can see that we have uh, uh, Oracle running. So uh, let's go ahead and uh, try on SQL Plus. Assist DBA. All right, and we'll go ahead and uh, start the database. All right, so this isn't working because uh, my database set is not set correctly. So let's fix that. Uh, export Oracle set is going to be ORCL. That's the name of my database. Let's try that again. And uh, you can see here that uh, I have a database running. I can say something like set all. All right, and that is operational. I can uh, further go in here and uh, take a look at uh, the processes running on the system. And so uh, let's see here, we have uh, uh, the firewall. Uh, let's go down. There's uh, Oracle logged in, virtual box running. Excellent. Let's, uh, let's see here. Number of blue bits. There we go. So these processes right here uh, are evidence that the database is running. So Aura, Log Rider, DB Rider, and so forth. Okay, so the database installation was successful. We created a new Oracle database. And now I can move on to my application installation steps. Thank you. Okay, so now let's go ahead and um, back up this database. Uh, to start with, we'll shut it down. Let's do that now. Shut down immediate. So this is going to uh, cleanly shut down the database. Since the database right now is not in archive log mode, uh, any problem uh, with data would prevent uh, recovery. So we have the database shut down. Let's go ahead and back it up. I believe that our files are under home, Oracle, and then app, and then uh, Oracle again, and then Aura data. So here is the key set of files um, and the name of my database is ORCL so the database has to be shut down in order for the backup to be possible and for the backup to be clean so I'll go ahead and just uh, I could do a copy uh, or I can just do uh, tar cz bf so create a tar compressed and we'll call that uh, empty db um, the name of the database is ORCL 
and we'll go ahead and do that. So now what we're doing is we're simply uh, compressing the files into uh, a single archive and uh, if something goes wrong with my application install I'll be able to go back, recover the empty database and just start it up. The other alternative would be to rerun the DBCA or the uh, database uh, configuration assistant and recreate a database from scratch. Well, um, by doing this called backup, uh, I can save myself uh, a bit of time because I expect that uh, during the installation of the application, uh, I will make a mistake or two of my configuration and I'll be uh, complete. So uh, this is a safe way uh, to proceed. Okay, so we have a control file for Oracle, which happens to be uh, a main registry for the entire database. The sysox would be uh, a section of the database that contains information about uh, table spaces, about tables. Uh, it is uh, a key brain of the database. We have other uh, database files here. These database files can contain uh, one or more table spaces uh, you know, inside of them. And so we have some redo uh, log files here, which basically will have every transaction that happens in the database. Uh, and uh, later they can be uh, then uh, archived and transactions played back as needed. All right, so now we're ready to start this database backup. So our SQL plus is this DBA, and we are connected to an idle instance. So let's start it up. And now the database is uh, loaded into memory, and uh, files are mounted, and now the database is operational. So this is the screen that most DBAs uh, love to see and uh, gives us Forms and fuzzes. Thanks very much.